In this chapter, we'll look at the ways to visualize the pages of your website, or specific pieces of content, to support your high-level goals and calls to action. First, I'll show you some examples of popular types of content. Don't worry, you won't be responsible for creating any of that content. We're still in the planning stage. Let's look at some of the most common types of content you may want to consider adding to your site. First, we have text-based content which can include things like a company bio or about us description, information about services or products, client testimonials, and an FAQ, or frequently asked questions page. The visual elements of your website content may include photography, like pictures of your products or team members. You may also want to include a video showing your product or service in action, or a demo explaining who you are and what you're about. Of course, if you're a musician or a video artist, you might place a video on the home page. In addition to the text and visual elements of a website, there are other types of content you may wish to add for extra interaction with site visitors. Things like a photo gallery to present your images, a contact form, a button that links to your phone number, or a newsletter sign-up form are all pieces of content worth considering. Based on these examples, think of what content visitors to your site would expect and what could help them decide to make a purchase. Start with a wish list to keep track of the most important content you'll need for your site. For more suggestions of specific types of content, check out the templates in your category on Wix.com. Once you have thought about the main pieces of content you'll need, it becomes a lot easier to organize this content into pages. We strongly recommend you making a simple drawing of your website's main pages based on the types of content you will include. This is known as a sitemap, or a basic map of your website structure. Sitemaps are like the blueprints of your site, demonstrating how a visitor would move throughout the site using the calls to action to reach the site goals. Your sitemap doesn't need to be very detailed and actually shouldn't include any design information. It's just a sketch to plan the layout of your site to help you decide what content goes where and how it all fits together. For example, if your client has a fantastic video that offers an overview of the business, you can decide it belongs on the home page. If you have enough testimonials, you can create a testimonials page. Maybe your business was reviewed by a newspaper or a magazine. You want to highlight your positive mentions on a designated press page. Here we see a sample sitemap for an e-commerce website, which means this website has items available for online purchase. We know that the goal here is to bring your site visitors to the shop page, so it is the most important place on this website. This page should be very easy to access from all the other pages. This is an example of how a sitemap paves a smooth road towards your website goals. The most important thing to get out of a sitemap is to have a sense of number one, the amount of pages your site will have, and number two, to understand the path a user will take as he or she travels throughout the site. Again, sitemaps are tools that allow you to focus, to plan your website's content without getting distracted with design decisions. There are lots of ways to make a simple sitemap, depending on how complex your website is and how many pages it needs. A sheet of paper and a pencil works just fine. You can also use PowerPoint for a more official rendering, or you can place sticky notes or index cards on a wall and take a picture to share with others. At this stage, get the big picture of your content needs by making a basic sketch of your website using a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. You don't need to get too fancy or too detailed. Use your wish list and your calls to action to make just a simple map of your key pages.